decarboxylation of resorcinol. Attention! Resorcinol can cause irritation of the skin and eyes and is toxic if swallowed. It can cause allergic reactions of the skin, damage of the organs and is toxic to aquatic life with long-lasting effects. Hydrochloric acid can cause chemical burns of the skin, eyes and respiratory tract. Resorcinolic acid can cause irritation of the skin, eyes and respiratory tract. I don't take any responsibility for damage done to persons or property caused by the recreation of this experiment. To a 250 milliliter round bottom flask, 25 grams of sodium bicarbonate and 5.9 grams of resorcinol were added. Then 60 milliliters of distilled water were added. A stirring bar was added and the flask was attached to an apparatus with a Dimroth cooler and an oil bath. The oil bath should be heated to 95 degrees C and the mixture had to be stirred for 2 hours. The stirring hot plate couldn't be set precisely to this temperature so it was tried to keep it at least at 100 degrees C. Till the end it did rise to 105 degrees C. The following reaction takes place. The resorcinol reacts with the bicarbonate to form the sodium salt of the 2,4-dihydroxybenzoic acid which is also called beta resorcilic acid. This is called a Kolbe-Schmidt reaction. After two hours the temperature should be increased to 130 degrees C for 15 minutes. Obviously large amounts of carbon dioxide were formed. The temperature could not be set precisely again but due to the boiling point of the water this shouldn't be a problem. After the 15 minutes the formation of gas stopped and the flask was removed from the oil bath. While cooling down a crystalline precipitate had formed. The content of the flask was then added to a 600 ml beaker and the residue was washed out with some water. Next, 29 ml of concentrated hydrochloric acid were added while stirring. This causes the resorcilic acid to be protonated and the free acid and sodium chloride are formed. In the end the mixture foams a lot so that it can't be stirred anymore. By swirling the amount of the foam could be decreased. When the foaming was finished it was cooled down and kept overnight at 4 degrees C. Then the product was filtered off, the beaker was washed out with some water and the product was washed directly with some water. The filtrate was cooled further to see if more product might crystallize, but the amount was negligible, which is why it can be disposed of. The product was transferred to a small beaker. It could then be recrystallized from water, but I had to interrupt my synthesis, which is why it was at first dried above sulfuric acid. At first it was tried to recrystallize from the smallest amount of water as it is common in the lab.
but on crystallizing it became obvious that more water should have been added. In the second run, 25 milliliters of distilled water were added according to the literature. Here 0.5 grams of active charcoal could be added and afterwards filtered off from the hot solution to get a cleaner product. This time fine needle shaped crystals did form that could then be filtered off. Again, the beaker was washed out with some water. At the end, the product itself was washed with water. After drying it again, 3.87 grams of 2,4 dihydroxybenzoic acid were obtained, which corresponds to a yield of 47%. To find out whether the product is an acid, the reaction of resorcinol and the product with saturated sodium bicarbonate solution was compared. The formation of CO2 indicates that the carboxylation was successful. This was the carboxylation of resorcinol. I hope you enjoyed, please rate and comment. If you want to see more synthesis, you can watch my playlist here, or you can watch my latest video here.